snap. Are you scared? Who's scared? Okay, who is legitimately a little freaked out by Stranger Things when you watch it? Anybody else? Okay, but listen, does anybody else finish an episode before bed and then have to watch something funny to, like, I don't know, get it out of your, your mind and out of your brain? Okay, that's me a little tiny bit. Hey, guess what? I have good news. There's only 10 Wednesdays till Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. It's practically Christmas. I really am. One we that's true, one Wednesday to Halloween, but 10 till Christmas. All right, so listen. Listen, shh. Listen, I know you guys are so excited to see me up here. I know. But if you could do me a favor and give me 20 minutes, just give me 20 minutes, okay? Just give me 20 minutes because you never know what God wants to speak into your heart, okay? Can you guys do that for me? If you can give me 20 minutes, please put your hand in the air and wave it like you just don't care. If you cannot give me 20 minutes, just shh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so, uh, Pastor Jay, where are you at? I don't know. Okay. In the back with his, with his girl. That's cute. Um, make sure you leave room for the Holy Spirit. Leave room for Jesus. That goes for, that goes for all the couples in this room. Just 20 minutes, okay? Okay? Just 20 minutes, okay? Will you do that for me? Thank you so much. So I led a girls group once. And um, she said that she was on the couch with her boyfriend. <laughs> okay. And um, they were watching a movie, and her mom walked in. And her mom was like, you need to leave room for Jesus. This is how, exactly how she tells it. And she said, I was like, there is room for Jesus. And my mom was like, Jesus is fat. You get it? Like he needs more he needs more room because he's fat. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if that's like biblical or true in any way. But anyway. So listen, so when uh, Pastor Jason asked me to talk, I was like, yeah, sure. What do you want me to talk about? And he's like, sin. And I was like, oh, cool. So like a super light, easy subject, sin. So here I am to talk about sin. Anybody heard the word sin before? Has anybody sinned before? You, I know, you better raise your hand. I, yeah, I'm looking at you, Christian. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Listen, all y'all have sinned. Some of y'all right here are sinning right now because I said give me 20 minutes. Yeah, that's right. I see you, Jason. You think I won't call you out? So listen. This is when I knew that sin was truly, like, innate within our human nature. This is when I knew, when I had children. I'm just being real with you. Because, like, babies are the biggest sinners I've ever seen in my life, you know? You're like, stop crying, and then they cry more. And you're like, listen to me, and then they don't. And then you tell them to do something, and they do the opposite. So sin is innate within all of us. Say, I'm a sinner. <sighs> Point to the person next to you say, you're a sinner. Okay, now bring it back. Bring it back to me. Bring it back to me. We're going to keep this quick, 20 minutes. So listen. So um, I'm just going to tell you a quick story. One of my sons, not the one sitting in this room, you're welcome. So um, we are watching the show. It's not him, I promise. So we are watching the show, and... The older sibling had done something he shouldn't do. And the younger sibling, on a show, you guys listen, like turn it up a little bit, old people. So listen, on the show, the older brother had done something he shouldn't have done. And the younger sister find, found out about it. Anybody have younger siblings? How many of you, how many of you would agree that your younger sibling is a sinner? Yes, in the name of Jesus, amen. Okay. So listen, shh. 
Dude, y'all are killing me tonight. Okay, so the younger sibling found out about it, was going to tell the parents, and the brother was like, yo, if you tell mom and dad, then I'm not going to be able to go to the lake. So listen, so my youngest son, who we are concerned about sometimes, said to me, if I was that older brother, I'd straight tape her face like a million times and tie her up and put her in a basement until after the lake. And I was like, what? What? Should I be scared in my sleep, yes or no? I think so too. So listen, a bunch of sinners. All y'all are sinners. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners, okay? We're going to talk about sin tonight, but what is sin? What is sin? Here we go. You ready? Sin is a creep. Everybody say sin is a creep. How many of you guys ever known a creep before? Creepers? So listen. <sighs> what just happened? I missed a modern day reference. What was it? I don't know, guys. Can I trust you? Y'all are sinners. I don't trust anything you say. So listen. Listen, for real. Sin, sin is a creep. And it will come in slow, and it will come in, and you won't, will not expect it sometimes. I was in high school once, and I was standing in line, and a guy came up behind me, and he pinched my butt. Steve. No, it wasn't Steve. I didn't even know him. You want to know what I did? What do you think I did? What do you think I did? What do you think I did? Oh, I turned around, and I slapped him so hard across the face. Thank you. Thank you. So listen, just like the creep that stood behind me, listen, just like the creep that stood behind me, sin will creep up behind you and want to pinch your booty. And you got to turn around, you got to slap the heck out of that. And you got to tell him to get out of here because... You do not want to be disrespected. Listen, what else is sin? Sin separates us from each other. Everybody say each other. How many of you guys have ever felt separated by somebody else's sin? How many of you? Gossip? Pain? Right? Somebody else has made you feel completely separated from them because of something that they did. Yes or no? Anybody? Okay, so sin separates us from each other. Sin separates us from Jesus. Everybody say from Jesus. Sin is a liar. Everybody say sin is a liar. This is what sin wants you to think, okay? Sin wants you to think that you're missing out. It wants you to think it's harmless. It wants you to think that no one will find out, and it wants you to think that it's easier than walking in obedience, and I promise you that it's not. James 4.17, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. How many of you guys have ever known what you should do? and didn't do it, or you did the opposite, right? Everybody, all of us can. So listen, sin affects everyone. Say everyone. Everyone. Sin affects everyone. Nobody is exempt from sin. Nobody. Nobody is perfect. Nobody gets to have a pass. Nobody gets to have a, a skip that. Like nobody gets a pass from sin. Everybody is born into sin. Romans 8.23, have you guys all heard it? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Ecclesiastes 7.20, surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. There is nobody who is without sin. So if all of us are with sin, okay, that means that you're not, it's not a matter of if you sin, it's a matter of when you sin. Everybody say, when I sin. So listen, This is what God wants you to hear tonight. Because when you sin, what do you do? Everybody say, what do I do when I sin? How do I deal with it? Right? That's true. When you sin, you sin. That's true. So listen. Here's what you do. When you sin, it's very deep. Are you ready? You're going to get back up and you're going to try again. Preach. So watch. I found this video, but you got to listen really close. Okay? I found this video that kind of represents, like, it's just such a good picture. Here we go. Watch this video really quick. Listen, listen, listen. Try again. Try again. 
We're gonna watch it one more time. We're gonna watch it again. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. Try again. Try again. Let's go. We're gonna watch it one more time because I really need it to sink in. I need it to sink in. Here we go. Oh. Try again. Try again, guys. Try again. You can stop it. So listen. When you sin, sometimes we're going to be walking across rocky, just like this little girl was. And if you fall, what do you need to do? Try again. You get back up and you try again. And let me tell you something else. If you keep tripping on the same log, right, she's walking, if you keep tripping on the same log over and over and over again, what do you need to do? Move the dang log. Move the log. If you are in your life and you know that something causes you to sin, that you know it causes you to stumble, there are those of you in this room who struggle, I know, with pornography. Yeah, I said pornography from the front. Some of you struggle with that, and it is a real issue for you. Do what you can to avoid it. Pastor Steve struggled with alcohol. Guess what we never have in our home even though he doesn't anymore. Alcohol, why? Because are we going to put that log in front of you when you have something you struggle with? If you keep tripping on the same log, remove the log and then try again. You have to learn to hate the sin that keeps getting in your way. How many of you guys have done the same thing over and over again? Anybody? (sighs) He felt that one. So listen. It says in Romans chapter 7, for I do not understand my own actions. How many of you guys have ever been there? For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, and that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh, right? Flesh is our body, it's who we are. It's our sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. How many of you guys have ever had the desire and you want to do what's right, but then you fail and you do what's wrong? (sighs) All the time, right? I've been there, you've been there, everybody's been there. But listen, when you learn to hate the sin that keeps getting in your way, and you learn to hate that thing, you will be easier to remove it from your life and do something different because you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result, right? We've all heard that before. So if a log keeps getting in your way, move it and try again. My, my mom was the kind of mom who, uh, she didn't mess around, you know what I mean? Like, we saw somebody, like, on the side of the road getting arrested. She would be like, look at that. Look at that over there. They probably do drugs, and they're homeless, and they smoke, too, and, like, all the things, right? So, like, I was, had a little bit of a twisted mindset when it came to that. But I remember one time we were at the mall, and I was probably, I don't know, six or seven. And uh, all of a sudden, all this commotion started happening. And there's, like guys coming from everywhere, and, like, moms are, like, ushering their small children away, and my mom grabbed me and my sister by the hand, and she pulled this forward, and she said, you stand here, and you watch this. Yeah, that's the kind of mom I have, and all of a sudden, this lady comes running wearing a fur coat, and she's running down the aisle, and these men are chasing her, and they reach out, and they grab her, and they grab her by the hair, and they pull her back, And her entire hair comes off of her head. And my mom said to me, that's what happens when you steal. And I was like, I'm going to lose all my hair if I steal? What? (laughs) But listen, here's what that did for me. It instilled in me a hate for things that I did not want to be. I did not want to be the girl running through the mall, getting chased after. And obviously now I know it was a wig because I'm much smarter now. But back then, for quite a while, I thought if I stole, my hair was going to fall out. And I kind of liked my hair. Kept me from stealing for a hot minute. But anyway, 
I literally just said, I do not steal. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Good night. So listen, what that did was it instilled a hate inside of me for the sin that I did not want to commit and for the behavior that I did not want to have. So you have to learn how to hate the sin. Because if you can't hate the sin, you're going to be drawn back to it every single time. What else do you do when you face sin? Because you will face sin. You have to know that you've already been given the power, right? The power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Christ is within you. And you've already been given the power to combat it. You've already been given the power. You are more powerful than your thoughts. You're more powerful than the sin itself because God dwells within you. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, how many of you know them? Who can say them? And self-control. Everybody say self-control. So listen. When you face sin in your life, you have got to learn how to control your impulses. Everybody say impulses. Because you're going to feel drawn to things that feel shiny and pretty because Satan packages them in a way that makes it look really good and really cool. But it is not, and it will only bring you destruction. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. You have the power to have self-control. And the good news is that you get to choose that for yourself. Nobody can choose that for you. You get to choose. Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, God always requires us to do something before he can provide the miracle, right? He always asks us to take a step of faith forward. He says, come to me. He's always right there. But he's not going to force you into anything. He's not going to force you to be in right relationship with him. He will not force you to step outside of your will. He says, come to me. I'm here. I'm ready. So when you come face to face with your sin, there are two things you're going to do. You're going to flee or you're going to indulge. And which of those do you want to do? That has to be your decision. I can't decide that for you. Pastor Jason can't decide that for you. When you come face to face with sin, are you going to flee or are you going to indulge? When... When that sin is standing in front of you, and you know, you know where your weaknesses are. Every single one of you in this room, I'm sure every one of you have already thought about something that you struggle with. And if you haven't, do it now. Think about it. Because when you're faced with that thing, what are you going to do? It's your choice. Then you need to confess and you need to ask for forgiveness, right? You need to talk about it. You need to speak it. Because there's power in words, there's power in talking about something. Don't just hold it in. Don't just keep it right here. Don't just try on your own power and in your own will to overcome whatever it is that you're trying to overcome. You've got to talk about it. You've got to ask for forgiveness. God is always ready to forgive. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Then you need to remember that the price has already been paid. What's the price that's been paid? Jesus died on the cross for us. That's right. On our own, we cannot overcome sin. We cannot. Because our flesh is too strong. But the power of Christ within you is stronger than anything you will ever encounter. It is stronger than any sin you will face. Satan has no power where Jesus dwells. He has no power. So there's nothing to fear. John 8, 36 says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I pray that these verses have helped you in some way, and I want you to know that though we are doomed to hell because of our sins, the Lord has provided us a way to escape our punishment. But believing in the death of Jesus and claiming his victory on the cross for our sins, we can partake in his freedom. You can have a new beginning today. The Lord is good and just, so that if we come before him with humility, 
who will remove the sin in our lives and make us new, we have hope. There is hope in Jesus, you guys. How many of you guys have ever felt hopeless? How many of you guys have ever felt like I'm too far gone? And you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. If you've ever felt like you're too far gone, I'm here to tell you that that is a lie. You are not too far gone because God has something more for you. We're going to do things a little differently tonight. And Janelle's going to come back up here. I'm going to read you one last um, passage from Romans 8. Romans is full of good stuff. If you don't know the word of God, you need to know the word of God because that is how you're going to face what is before you with truth and with conviction and with the power of the Holy Spirit. But Romans 8.22 says, since we've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners, this is from the message, by the way, and proved that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us. God did it for us. Out of sheer generosity, he put us in right standing with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be, and he did it by means of Jesus Christ. So I'd like you to close your eyes and bow your heads right now. And I feel like I cannot end tonight without giving everybody in this room an opportunity to know Jesus in a personal way. Because maybe some of you are sitting in this room and you're not even sure if you have, close your eyes please, you're not even sure if you have relationship with Jesus. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe you've been doing things all the wrong way and you want to be better and you don't and you hate those things but you don't know how to fix it. And I'm telling you right now that Jesus Christ is the only way. And if you don't have relationship with him or you're unsure if you have relationship with him, I want to give you the opportunity tonight, right now. So don't be afraid. Don't be scared because Jesus offers hope and peace and assurance and he offers freedom from our sins. So if you want relationship with Jesus tonight, raise your hand in the air. We're going to pray. Raise your hand. Raise it up high. We're going to pray this prayer. There's a lot of you in this room. You are not alone. You are not alone alone in this room tonight. Jesus offers freedom. Sin binds us. Sin puts us in chains. But Jesus wants to break those chains and bring you freedom. And he wants more for you than what you even want for yourself or what you know that you want for yourself. So if you raise your hand, I want you to repeat this prayer. And everybody in this room, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart, to come into my life, and to save my soul. God, I lay it all at your feet. God, I'm tired of the sin, of the hopelessness. God, I'm tired of feeling no peace. So God, I ask you to just take over, take control of my life. I give it all to you. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Keep your eyes closed for me. There's another group in this room who is angry because you have now suffered the consequences of somebody else's sins. And somebody else's sins are making you angry because you are suffering. And if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Keep your hand in the air. Jesus, you see the hands lifted high. God, I pray that they would know that they are not alone. Jesus, I pray that you would release them from the anger. God, that they would walk in your joy and in your peace. Father, that you would help them to forgive whoever it is that they need to forgive in their life. God, we know that sometimes we suffer from the consequences of the sins of others. And I ask Jesus right now that you would touch their spirit, that you would touch their soul, God, that they would feel your peace, that they would feel your presence like never before, Lord. God, I pray that they would know that they are not alone. They are not the only ones who have had to suffer from the consequence of somebody else's actions. But God, with you, we can find peace and we can find hope. So I pray, God, that they would find healing in that tonight. For the rest of you, I want you to take a moment 
and think to yourself, what sin is it that you keep fighting against? Because there are a lot of you in this room who keep fighting against the same sin and you're tired and you're worn down and God has something more for you. He has something bigger for you and you need to move the log and try again. Move the log and try again because you don't ever run out of chances with Jesus. He is ready to accept you with open arms and he wants you to find freedom and forgiveness tonight. And I know that this message is for a lot of you in this room tonight. So we're just going to have a, a minute where it's quiet. And I want you to think and ask and just spend some time between you and Jesus and ask him, what sin or sins is, are it that you need to face tonight, that you need to look square in the eye and say no more? I do not accept the bonds of this sin in my life anymore. say go, I want you to not hesitate because God wants to break the chains tonight. I know it. I feel it in my bones. I feel it in my spirit. And God wants you to walk in his freedom. And he is tired of lazy Christian teenagers who have given over to what Satan wants for your life. He's sick of it. I'm sick of it. He's standing before you and he says enough is enough down and come back to me because I am the one who can offer you freedom and peace and joy and you do not have to be weighed down by the worries of this world but he offers freedom so when I say go I want you to run to this altar and I want you to leave it here and I don't want you to pick it back up and take it back home with you leave it here and then I want you to talk to somebody tonight. I want you to tell them what you laid down because there is power in confession. Ready, set, go.